take your Bibles, turn to 1 Chronicles, chapter number 1. We'll read verse number 46. The Bible said, And when Husham was dead, Hadad, the son of Bedad, which smote Midian in the field of Moab, reigned in his stead, and the name of his city was Avith. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We're thankful for that day to where you came to where we were. Lost without you, without hope. That day, Lord, that measure of faith that you've given to every man, we acted on. We put our faith in you. We called on you, Lord. You saved us. You changed us. Made us a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things were passed away, and behold, all things become new. God, thank you for the new man. God, thank you for the hope of glory. God, thank you for a peace that passeth all understanding. Thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. Now, Lord, I thank you for a good report of two good jail services. Lord, uh, both services had a lot of folks came out that were sober, listening to the preaching of the Word of God. Lord, I pray that as that seed was planted, Lord, you'd water it, and God, we'd see it come to fruition. We'd see folks saved over there. Thank you for the ones that have been saved through the years. Lord, I pray for those over there right now. God, you'd save them. Lord, I thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Thank you for the teaching of the Word of God. Thank you for folks that are eager to learn of the Word of God. God, thank you for good song service. Thank you for good congregational singing, good choir singing, good special singing. Lord, the table certainly has been set by the singing for the preaching of the Word of God. Now, Father, I pray you'd help us now. You know the need of every heart here this morning. And God, I, begin, I pray you'd begin to speak. And God, move and touch people's hearts and Help them with their circumstances. Some may be facing problems. Some may be facing health problems, financial problems, uh, uh, personal problems, uh, family problems. Uh, Lord, some may be facing, Lord, uh, 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 things they thought they would never face. And God, there may be some here today uh, that, Lord, have just grown cold on God. I pray today there be a reviving in their heart. God, there may be some here today that, Lord, may have a head knowledge of you, but they don't know the heart knowledge of you. They've never trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Lord, I pray today would be the day of their salvation. Uh, Father, I do pray for being here amongst us today that, Lord, are hurting, you'd help them. Any that are struggling, you'd strengthen them. And God, certainly again, save the lost. Uh, Father, I pray for those that are sick, that desire to be here but couldn't be here. God, you'd touch them uh, I pray for those that are providentially hindered. You'd help them. Pray for those that are traveling. You'd give them traveling mercies. Uh, Then, Father, I pray for Miss Tammy. You'd help her with her broken ankle, God. uh, I pray that, Lord, uh, 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 the orthopedic surgeon be able to get everything uh, back and she'd be back to having a full quality of life. I pray for her. You'd help her while she's struggling and hurting. I pray for Brother Ed that, God, you'd touch him. and God, I pray you'd... uh, 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 Lord, dispatch right now exactly what it takes to eradicate the infection, uh, Lord, in his body. And God, I pray you'd give him full quality of life uh, and he'd be back uh, 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 full strength uh, and ready to serve the Lord. I pray for Miss Crystal. Lord, I know she had a bad week. Lord, I pray you'd touch. I pray you'd intervene. I pray you'd step on the scene. And this week, Lord, uh, you'd uh, 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 dumbfound and amaze the doctors. uh, Lord, they'd have to recognize that there's somebody else in control of the situation, uh, and his name is Jesus. Uh, Lord, I do pray uh, uh, for my nephew Tyler. You'd help him, uh, Lord, as he's facing surgery on Tuesday. I pray for others, Lord, uh, that need a special touch, need some help. God, you'd help them. Uh, Now help us from the Word of God. uh, Use this unworthy vessel. uh, Glorify your name, Father. We'll thank you for it. Thank you already, Lord, for meeting with us. We're excited about being here. Lord Jesus, we love you because you first loved us. Uh, 
Bless now, we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' holy name we ask it all. Amen and amen. We find in First Chronicles uh, that chapter uh, where a lot of people don't like to read. Uh, the first nine chapters of Chronicles deals with the genealogies that God wanted us to understand and know. See, God keeps a good record. And he keeps records in the Bible. And can I say that some people uh, don't like looking at names and records. They skip over these things. Uh, only weird people read these names all the time. And I just happen to be weird. I like uh, reading the Bible. Amen. I like John 3.16, but I also like 1 Chronicles 1.46. It's all the Word of God. And I understand there are some parts of the Word of God that appeal to us more than others. And can I say this, that uh, I was just yesterday uh, trying to find the will of God for this morning. I'd been in revival this week, I'd read this week, I had some thoughts from this week. Uh, yesterday, uh, after being busy getting home and trying to get things caught up, uh, Sat down in my office at the house, opened the Bible. Uh, might as well had the phone book. Yeah, might as well. I just I, I, I couldn't find God. Didn't have nothing. By the way, kids, Google phone books. <laughs> Used to be a way of life. Uh, now it's gone by the wayside. Uh, but I just couldn't find God. He's right where he needed to be. I just wasn't where I needed to be. And I began to ask the Lord. I said, Lord, your people are going to come to church tomorrow. They need some help. Lord, show me what I need. Uh, do something for me that I might have something for them. And uh, talked to him for a little while. Miss Melissa and started reading and just kept reading. Somehow I ended up here in First Chronicles chapter number 1. And uh, again, a lot of people skip all these names. But I kind of like them. In verses 43 down through verse 54 we find these men mentioned were actually kings over certain areas long before Israel had a king over them. And we find that they reigned over providences and stuff. And you know if you've been here any length of time that these men's names reveal something about their character. In Bible times, if a man uh, reached the age of 30 and his name didn't fit his character, they changed their name. And, you know, Ed might mean uh, look like Colonel Sanders and have knee problems. Well, that name fits him. But if uh, Ed meant handsome, uh, young, and stout, we'd have to change his name, wouldn't we, huh? Brother Ed's going on, thank God we're not in Bible times, huh? Uh, but we find here that these names mean something. Now I want you to notice here in this verse number 46. The first name I'm interested in, it says, and when Husham was dead. I'm interested in Husham. Husham means hastening peace. Or one that ran to peace. One that held on to peace. Thanks be unto God for peace. We live in a world that is void of peace. We live in a world of chaos. We live in a world of wickedness. We live in a world of pride. We live in a world uh, that thinks itself sustained. Uh, we live in a world that is void of God uh, and void of peace. Uh, can I say today, friends, when the world says peace, uh, they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, they have no inward peace, uh, they have no outward peace, uh, and there is no such thing as peace treaties or agreements anymore. Uh, 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 we live in a day and age where it is uh, my right to my claim to myself, uh, which is the essence of selfishness, uh, which is the essence of sin. Uh, but we find in the Bible... Uh, Husham was somebody uh, that knew something about peace. Uh, can I say today uh, that peace with God uh, 
comes through salvation. Uh, 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 people that are lost, their souls are in turmoil. Uh, they are looking uh, to fill a void in their life. Uh, and they're looking to do that through the pleasures of the world. Uh, can I say there's pleasure and sin for a season, season uh, but that season is short. Uh, it runs out. Uh, and they're looking for something uh, to replace the pleasure they once had. Uh, they're looking for something to make them go higher than they've been before. Uh, something to make their uh, 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 pains go away. Uh, they're looking for something uh, to fill a void. Uh, some people do it through entertainment. Uh, some people do it through a needle. Uh, some people do it through a bottle. Uh, some people do it through pornography. Uh, some people do it uh, in other gratification of the flesh. Uh, uh, some people do it through sports. Uh, thanks be unto God, football back on. Hallelujah. You got something worth watching now. Uh, hey, uh, but people are looking uh, to fill a void. Uh, and friend, uh, uh, the void they're looking to fill uh, is the Lord. Uh, God made man in his own image. Uh, God formed man out of the dust of the earth. Uh, and God breathed into the nostrils of man the breath of life. Uh, and man became a living soul. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, these old bodies die, uh, but the soul of man Man lives forever. Uh, and when God uh, for man, uh, he made man with a conscience. Uh, and the very conscience of man uh, knows he needs to get right with God. Uh, but man, uh, through his wickedness, uh, will seek out anything in this world uh, to fill that missing part of his life. Uh, but that missing part uh, doesn't come uh, until somebody realizes they're lost, uh, they're a sinner, uh, and they need to be saved. Uh, and when they put their faith and trust in the Lord, uh, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord uh, shall be saved. Uh, and when they get saved by the good grace of God, uh, they find a peace uh, that this world doesn't know. Uh, listen, come what may, uh, we may face some tumultuous times in the days of ahead. Uh, we may face wicked times in the days ahead. Uh, but I've got news for you, neighbor. Uh, they can take everything I own, uh, but they can't take him away from me. Uh, and I have peace with God. Uh, let it come. Let the floods come. Let the storms come. Let the fire come. I've got news for you. I've got peace with God. Hallelujah. And there is a peace that passeth all understanding. I don't have to understand what's going on in this world. I just need to know Him. And I have peace. Uh, listen. I don't know what's going to happen in the election. That's God's business. He's the one that sets kings up. And can I say, whoever gets in, whether they're voted for or not, it's all right in my soul. Because I know the Lord. And can I say, He's the one in control. And peace with God comes through salvation. Peace from God comes through application. Amen. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Can I say that there is a peace from God that you only get uh, by learning and applying the word of God in your life? Do you know why some people uh, can be saved, uh, know the peace of God from salvation, uh, Know that they know that they know they're going to heaven when they die. Uh, but when they have to face something, uh, maybe it's an operation. Uh, maybe it's a, a something a little grave. Uh, and they get all torn apart. Uh, and their nerves get all tore up. Uh, you know why? Uh, they don't have peace. Oh. Amen. The peace from God comes through application. The more the Word of God you put in practice in your life, the more peace you'll get from God. Amen. You can ask Miss Annette. She's been with me when they go to hook me all up to go have surgery. And they look at me like I'm crazy. My heart rate would be about 52. My blood pressure is stable as can be. And they just look at me like, 
You all right? I'm fine. Huh? Until I had this one gal, she come in and told me that she was, uh, uh, she was certified at hooking you up to IVs. Show me her badge. Five pokes later, she had to go get a nurse. You say, why? Because one more poke, I was going to poke her in the nose. Say, you weren't troubled? Nope. What if you'd have died? Don't threaten me with heaven. No, I'm in his hand. His hand's in the Father's hand. Hmm? Are you listening? There's a peace that comes from God when you apply the things of God in your life. Your nerves should never, ever get tore up over something physical in this world. So how do you get that way? Get in the book and start doing what the book says. And you'll get peace from God. That don't mean you won't get upset. That don't mean you won't fear in some things. That don't mean you won't worry about some things. It does mean that when all those emotions come, you keep them in check because you have peace. Hmm. Can I say the peace of God is inexpressible? You can't explain it, but you can experience it. Husham hastened or held on to peace. He had peace. We also find there's another fellow mentioned here named Hadad. Hadad's name means joy or joyful. You find joy in your King James Bible in some form or fashion 187 times. Can I say that joy simply represents cheerfulness? We ought to be cheerful. Hmm? It also represents certitude. It means you've been certified. The joy of the Lord's your strength. The most cheerful, happy people on the earth ought to be Christians. But some of you come in looking like your mother-in-law moved in. In Naja's case, his mother moved in. (laughs) Uh, Where's our joy? It also means contentment. You say, don't you want bigger, shinier, what? I'm content. Why? Because I have joy. Hmm? This fellow had joy. You know what a lot of Christians don't have? Joy. You know where you get joy? Hanging out with Jesus. The acronym for joy, J-O-Y, is Jesus first, other second, yourself last. We get that backwards. We want self first, other second, and Jesus just got to fit in. Hmm? The Lord loveth a cheerful giver, but we want folks to give to us. Hmm? There's a joy in giving. There's a joy in walking with the Lord. There's a joy in coming to the house of God. There's a joy in reading the Word of God. Where's our joy today? See, this world doesn't have joy. This world has lust, and it has their version of happiness. But it doesn't sustain. Joy will take you all the way to heaven. So, Husham represents peace. Hadad represents joy. And I read this verse, what spoke to my heart, what stuck out, what I could not get away from, is the last word in the verse. 
It said, in the name of his city was Avith. I thought there's something about Avith. I've never heard of Avith. I've heard of Avis. But I've never heard of Avith. And here we have a man that reigned as a king who had peace. And now we got a man who's reigning after his death who has joy. And this man's city is Avith. I'm thinking this must be one whale of a city. I mean, he's got joy. He's following peace. And by the way, joy always follows peace. But here he's got Avith. I'm thinking, what does that mean? I couldn't get away from it, Brother Ron. I, just kept, I read that and then Avith study, and I tried to read some other pattern. I kept thinking about Avith. And I tried to read over here and I kept thinking, and I went to Psalms, I went to Proverbs, I, went, I kept getting back to Avith. And Avith calls me to look at Husham and Hadath. You know what Avith means? Ruins. R U I N S. I have to be careful because normally I said ruins. It was a city in ruins. If it had walls, they were broken down. If it had homes, they were undefended. If it had anything, it had already been ransacked, uh, and it's a, just a heap of a mess. He's got joy, and he's living in a mess. He's living in ruins. He's living in heartbreak. He's living where everything has been destroyed. It does not resemble what it used to resemble, but he's got joy. How does that happen? I mean, his homeland is absolutely a wreck, but he's got joy. Everything around him's a mess, but he's got joy. How does that happen? Certainly he's got to be down. Certainly he's got to be disturbed. Uh, certainly he's got to be distraught. Uh, no, he's joyful. Yeah. Right. In a city of ruins. And so with God's help, I want to preach on how to have joy in the midst of ruin. Yeah. 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 How to have joy in the midst of ruin. Neighbor, you live long enough. If God don't come back from his ch a church uh, soon, uh, we're going to experience some ruin. Can I say, uh, for the last uh, 50 years, there's been an attack against the home. Can I say, I remember uh, when divorce was a rare thing. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, within the first three years of marriage, uh, uh, most marriages, some 65% ended divorce. Uh, 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 listen, we've got folks in here today uh, that have been divorced. I'm not throwing off on you. I'm just quoting the facts. Uh, uh, can I say uh, there are a lot of circumstances that go into divorce. Uh, 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 a lot of times it, it comes about uh, where you have one who's saved and one who's not saved. Uh, other times it comes about uh, because one breaks their vows. Uh, uh, other times it comes about uh, because so much financial pressure uh, it causes uh, hurt and disdain between the couple, uh, and it breaks. Uh, 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 without a doubt, uh, uh, the number one reason for divorce uh, is a lack of communication, uh, a lack of communicating hopes and fears, uh, and communicating. instead of communicating, they just argue all the time, uh, and they decide they can't live with each other, uh, and they end up in divorce. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, there's a myriad reasons for divorce, uh, but from the beginning, it was not so. Uh, uh, God created uh, man and woman, uh, and he brought them together, and they became one flesh. Uh, and can I say, through the hardness uh, of the heart of wicked men, uh, God permitted divorce. Uh, but it was never uh, to be a stopgap. It was never to be something you ran to. Uh, our nation's a mess. Uh, because our churches are a mess, because uh, our homes are a mess. Uh, uh, listen, uh, as time goes on, it's not going to get better. Uh, it's going to get worse. Uh, a perilous time shall come. Uh, and friends, uh, there's going to come a day uh, where they're going to try uh, and do away with the church. Uh, they're going to try and do away with Bible preaching. Uh, they're going to try and do away uh, with that blessed old book uh, that calls sin, sin. Uh, uh, listen, uh, they may uh, 
put us in a camp. They may put us in jail. Uh, they may try and take the Bible. Uh, they may lock the church. Uh, but I got news for you. Uh, the church ain't going down. She's a going up. Uh, and they can take uh, uh, the Bible. But hey, enough of it's hit. Enough of it in our hearts. Uh, we can still quote it. Uh, we can still preach it. Uh, they can cut our tongues out. We can still write it down. Uh, they can cut our hands off uh, and we can take our stumps and still point them toward heaven uh, and let them know Jesus saves. Uh, Jesus saves. Uh, hey, in the midst of ruin, uh, you can have joy. Uh, uh, how do you know? Because uh, hey, that did. Uh, and if he did, so can you and I. Uh, how do you have joy in the midst of ruin? Then I say, first of all, one can have joy in the midst of ruin by having a love for the Savior. You love Jesus, right? And you'll find joy regardless of your situation. The Bible said in 1 Peter 1, 8, Whom having not seen you love... In whom though now you see him not yet believe and you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Uh, 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 if you got the right kind of love, uh, you'll have joy uh, unspeakable uh, and full of glory. Uh, uh, can I say uh, we love him because he first loved us. Uh, he's loved us with an everlasting love. Uh, he's loved us so much uh, that he uh, left glory uh, and he came to earth. Uh, he became like you and I. Uh, so one day we can become like him. Uh, hey, uh, we love him because he manifested his love. He proved it and showed it. Uh, he showed it by becoming our sacrifice. Uh, he was a sacrifice for us. Uh, there was no sacrifice uh, that could merit God's favor. Uh, uh, friend, the blood of bulls and goats just pushed sin on down the road. Uh, but there was never a sacrifice that could take away the sin of the world. Uh, and there never was a sacrifice uh, for old Gentile dogs like you and I. Uh, but one day, uh, Jesus came, uh, born of a virgin, uh, manifested in the flesh, uh, and he lived a sinless, perfect life. Uh, he did what no man could do. He fulfilled the law. Uh, and my dear friends, uh, he walked up Calvary's mountain uh, and he laid down his life and he became our sacrifice. Uh, he bled and died uh, because without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. Uh, he became uh, broken bread and poured out wine for you and I. Uh, hey, uh, he became our sacrifice, our substitute. Uh, we should have died that death and went to hell. Uh, but Jesus died that death, uh, was buried and rose again, victorious over death, hell, and the grave. Uh, he took our death, uh, took our sins, uh, took our sin, uh, took our hell. Uh, Oh, because he loved us. Uh, what's not to love about him? Uh, he's altogether lovely. Uh, he became uh, our sacrifice. Uh, and when you realize uh, you've got him uh, and you fall in love with him, uh, hey, you can have joy in the midst of your ruin. Uh, can I say he not only became a sacrifice for us, we love him because of the salvation he offered us. He could have died that death and still never made a way for us. But he tasted death for every man. Can I say that Jesus is not interested in what address you live at? He's not interested in your bank account. He's not interested in your abilities. He's not interested in what you can offer him. Can I say he's not interested... Uh, in what color you are. By the way, God only sees one color. 
He sees the red, royal, redeeming blood of Jesus Christ uh, and whether or not uh, it's been applied. Uh, can I say God is no respecter of persons? Uh, and you know what? Uh, uh, when folks get saved by the good grace of God, neither are they. Uh, what a blessing uh, that we can come together. Uh, we got folks from Ohio, uh, folks from Indiana, uh, folks from Kentucky. Uh, we got white folks. Uh, we got black folks. Uh, we got folks from the Caribbean. Uh, hey, can I say, uh, we've got rednecks. Uh, we've got everybody in here. Uh, we've got uneducated. Uh, we got educated. Uh, we've got greatly educated. Uh, we got poor folks. Uh, we got folks struggling. Uh, we got folks with just a little. Uh, we've got maybe a few with a lot. Uh, but hey, uh, in Jesus we're all one. Uh, hey, uh, isn't it a blessing? Uh, there are no big eyes or little U's. Uh, we're just one in Christ. Uh, what a blessing uh, that he offered salvation to all. Uh, whosoever will uh, may come and drink of the water of life uh, freely. Uh, hey, uh, we love him because he made a way. Uh, Hey, he came to where we was, Miss Brittany, uh, and he let us know we could be saved. Uh, and what a blessing that salvation was offered to us. Amen. Uh, Amen. That'll give you joy in the midst of your ruin. Amen. You don't deserve his salvation, Amen. but he gave it to you anyway. I thought about this. We love him because of his sustaining us. Yeah. I thought about that this week. I read where gas is up 60% in the last four years. I read where some things are up 50%, some things up 40%, some things up 20%. I didn't see where anything went down in price. Yeah, amen. Uh, what can I say? It may be a little tighter, but David said it. He'd never seen the righteous forsaken, nor seed begging bread. Uh, cupboards may not be full, but you got a cupboard. Uh, something about that meal barrel, every time you go to it, there's some in there. Every time you need that cruise of oil, there's some in there. Uh, listen. Listen. I was thinking about this yesterday. I was at Costco getting gas because it was 20 cents cheaper a gallon. I can remember, not been that long ago, Miss Noreen, when me and Miss Nett, we could only put about $10 in the tank. That's about it. And drive her as much as we could get out of her. Squeeze all the juice out of it we could. I never forget we was going out on visitation one day, and Tony was they piled in my car. Tony went, and and he was freaking out because she was getting down there on the red. My car. He's like, my car never gets below half a tank. I said, where's your faith, man? Where's your faith? Uh, I looked out and said, I got thirty miles left. We're good, man. Yeah, I well, I drive it till it starts choking. <laughs> uh. I remember just being able to put $10 in it. I know it's up 60%. But Friday, I filled my truck up. Yesterday, I filled her car up. I'm talking about filled it up. It's tight, but God still sustains. He still provides. Huh? I'm telling you, God's been good. What will cause you to have joy in the midst of your ruin is just having a love for the Savior. Uh, there's nobody in here that belongs to God that you've been faithful to God and do your part that you can stand up and complain that God hadn't taken care of you. Hmm. What's not to love about Jesus? He's the best thing ever happened to us. And when your love for him is what it should be, you can have joy in the midst of your ruin. I thought about this. We can have joy in the midst of, of ruin 
because of the work of the Spirit of God in us. Galatians 5.22 says this, But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Second one, joy. Peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. When you got born again, you got sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And he began developing you, in you the fruit of the Spirit. When you first got saved, all you knew was love. You loved everything. You loved everybody. You loved the church. You loved everything in the church. Uh, you'd never heard some of them hymns. You loved them hymns. You loved preaching. You loved fellowship. Uh, uh, you just loved everything. That's the only fruit you had, uh, love. And then he began to develop joy and then peace and all these things. He began to develop in your life. Uh, and friend, regardless of what's going on in this chaotic world, uh, what's going on in your chaotic life, uh, What's going on in some chaotic churches? Uh, uh, can I say uh, you can still have joy because of the fruit of the Spirit in you? Uh, uh, because He lives in you. Uh, they can't take Him from you. Uh, hey, He's got a still small voice, uh, but sometimes He thunders uh, and He lets you know He's there. Uh, what a blessing to have Him indwelling us. Hallelujah. Huh? If you let your circumstances control you, it's because you grieve him who lives in you. Amen. If you let him control you, you'll never have circumstances. You'll just see opportunities. Amen. The difference between an obstacle and an opportunity is him. Yes, and you can find joy in the midst of your ruin by having a love for the Savior because of the work of the Spirit in you, but also through the straining of your faith. The Bible says in James chapter 1, verse 2, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. When troubles come, do you count it all joy? Most of the time we don't. Amen. When troubles come... Brethren, count it all joy when you fall in divers temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Through the straining of your faith, you can have joy. You can have joy that God has so much confidence in you, He's allowing your faith to be strained. Knowing that all of it is working patience in you. Let patience have its perfect work, that you be wanting nothing. Hmm. Friend, nobody ever signs up for certain trials. You didn't sign up for Megan to have physical problems. You didn't sign up for that. You didn't sign up for your children having food allergies. And I know it grieves you, especially when they're little, seeing other kids eat stuff that your children couldn't eat. You didn't sign up for what all has befallen your life. Colonel, you didn't sign up for infection. But Tony, you didn't sign up for all them spine problems and everything. Huh? Y'all didn't sign up for Samantha having all her problems and struggles. Miss Barb, you didn't sign up for your knee problems and also for all you have to do in taking care of your mama. You love your mama. You have proven yourself to be a godly daughter and taking care of your mama, but it's affecting your body. You didn't sign up for that. And I can go around the room because I know enough of you to know you're facing things. And when those things come, Brother Ron, we don't think, Hallelujah. But if we'd ever put it in perspective that God may be straining our faith to make it stronger. Stand up. Now as your age, I look like you. About a 29 inch waist. Huh? Huh? You got a small belt, you got it wrapped around you three times. Huh? But I know you work out. You need to work out more. 
But every time you pump that iron, you stretch that muscle. It tears it, but it grows back stronger. You just got to eat more, son. <laughs> uh, you hang out with me and eat what I eat, you'll get one of these. I do. It's, it's all good stuff. Sit down. I use them because I don't work out. But every time we do, Brother Clint, your age, it gets harder and harder. But you keep working out. And you tear it. It grows back stronger. Sometimes God strains us and even breaks us so we grow back stronger. Amen. Say, why would God want us to be stronger so we can show the world no matter what is thrown at us Amen. he who is in us yes. greater is he that is in you yes. than Amen. he that is in the world Amen. and when they see joy peace love yes. and hope in us they know they can't break us why do you think so many in the last few years have attacked Christians they look at us as their biggest threat because they know regardless of what is taken from us they can't take the hope that is in us Amen. Glory. and I say when God reaches in his shepherd's bag and he pulls you out yes. and he allows you to face a giant right. it's because he has confidence in you for what he's put in you to be able to handle the giant hmm? we ought to count it all joy that the great God of glory would even consider us, let alone allow opportunities to come where he gets glory from our life. When it's an obstacle, we dishonor him because we look at it selfishly. But when we count it all joy and we allow the joy to overcome the ruins, it's not an obstacle, it's an opportunity where God will get glory from my little piddly wife. Oh, what a difference, friend. You can have joy in the midst of ruin. Can I say this? We can have joy in the midst of ruin by smiting those things that oppress us. Look back at verse 46. And when Husham was dead, Hadad, the son of Bedad, here it is, which smote Midian, in the field of Moab. You know, if you search the Bible and you look after people who have searched battles, this is nowhere in record. There's no record of Hadad smoting Midian in the field of Moab. There's no record. Can I say that most of our battles the world will never see? Most of our battles are us having to crucify things within us. Things that hinder us. Things like doubt. Things like guilt. Things like grief. Things that rob our joy that we can overcome through the Scriptures and through the Spirit of God. So how can we have joy in the midst of ruin? We can have it by smiting those things which oppress us. Now Midian represents habits and judgments against those habits. In other words, bad habits. You ever have a bad habit? You might have one today. You know why it's a habit? It's habitual. You just can't lay it down. You just can't walk away from it. You just can't stop because it's become part of you. We find he smites Midian in the field of Moab. Mm, the field of Moab, Moab always represents flesh, but the field of Moab represents the dearth of the flesh. It's a famine area. It's an area that is not pleasant. It is an area that is an embarrassment. And can I say you may have a habit that embarrasses you before God. It's a habit that your flesh 
craves and longs for. Uh, by the way, you have two natures as a child of God. Uh, you have the old man uh, and the new man, the inner man. Uh, and the one that you feed the most will be the strongest. Uh, and if you've got a habit uh, that embarrasses God, uh, a habit that brings you down, uh, a habit that is robbing your joy, uh, my dear friends, can I say... Uh, that habit is controlling you. Uh, that habit uh, uh, is something that is a dearth and an embarrassment. Uh, but you can have victory over that habit. Uh, you can smite uh, that habit. Uh, uh, the Bible says in Galatians 5.24, uh, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh... Uh, with the affections and lusts. Uh, Titus chapter 2 verse 11, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us uh, that denying ungodliness uh, and worldly lust, uh, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Uh, 2 Timothy 2 22, uh, Flee also youthful lusts, uh, but follow righteousness, uh, faith, charity, peace, uh, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Uh, how can I overcome these habits? Uh, you get your face in the Word of God. Uh, you bend your knees in prayer to God. Uh, you ask God to do for you what you cannot do for yourself. Uh, you ask God to give you the strength uh, to crucify your flesh. Uh, Paul said he died daily. Uh, you can. Uh, the Bible says, Thanks be unto God which giveth us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, he can and will uh, enable you to overcome that thing. Uh, uh, friend, you've got to have a greater desire for Him than you do the habit. Uh, and when you uh, come before God uh, with a pure heart, say, God, uh, uh, forgive me of my sins. Help me with this thing. Help me to turn from it. Uh, uh, the great God of glory uh, will dispatch the help that you need. Uh, you can't overcome. Uh, hey, this fella did slay Midian uh, uh, there in that field of Moab. Uh, and hey, he had joy in the midst of ruins uh, and you can too uh, through smiting those things that oppress you. Amen. So many have doubt and guilt because you entertain the sorry no good devil. If you get a promise from the Word of God, uh, Paul said, if there be anything of virtue, anything of good report, anything that's loving, think on these things. Uh, when you learn to transform uh, the renewing of your mind uh, by putting the Word of God in your mind, uh, by meditating on it, uh, by getting a godly hymn uh, and start singing to Him the hymn, uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, all of a sudden doubt will flee. Uh, all of a sudden those things that bother you uh, uh, will find no place in your mind and in your heart. Uh, the Bible does say draw nigh to God he'll draw nigh to you resist the devil he'll flee from you you can't flee those youthful lusts uh, you can't run to Jesus uh, you can find help uh, I have found any time the devil tries to oppress me uh, I start pleading the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, uh, the devil hates that that's what defeated him at Calvary uh, he'll leave you alone uh, uh, the Lord will move in and you can have joy in the midst of your roar thought about this lastly. How do you have joy in the midst of ruin? You have joy in the midst of ruin by seeking a better country. Oh, yeah. Hebrews 11, 8 says, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after, should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. He trusted and obeyed. God said, go, and he went. People say, Abraham, where are you going? He said, I don't know. Why are you going? God said so. God said, go, and he went. He obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whither he went. Uh, by faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Amen. You want to have joy in the midst of the ruins? Set your eyes on heaven. There's an old song that says, I can almost see the lights of that city. We can almost hear the singing going on over there. Friend, we're getting closer than, than anybody's ever been before. Right. I believe the Lord's about ready to take His church out of here. Uh, you start keeping your eyes on the eastern sky and looking for the Lord to come, you'll have joy in the midst of your own. The Bible says we don't know what we shall be, but we do know when He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. And then the Bible says right after that in 1 John chapter 3, 
He said, every man that hath this hope purify himself, even as he is pure. If you're looking for him, you're going to be living right. If you're looking for him, you're going to be doing right. If you're looking for him, you're going to have a hope and a joy, and your heart's going to be pure, even as he's pure. You want to have joy in the midst of your ruin? Quit looking at the ruin. Start looking at him. You'll find joy in the midst of your ruin. Now, you may have a lot of problems today, but he's the lily of the valleys. You can find joy in the midst of your problems. Joy comes through Jesus. How's your joy today? Say, preacher, you don't know the problems. No, I don't. But I know the answer. The answer to every problem is Jesus. Say, preacher, I'm sick. I hate it. I've been on that side. But I do know this. Jesus will either heal you, help you, or hold you. Just get to Jesus. So, preacher, I'm lost. The answer for what you need is Jesus. He'll save you. Say, so, preacher, I'm struggling. The answer is Jesus. He said, if any labor and heavy laden, said, come unto me. He said, you'll find rest for your soul. He said, take my yoke upon you. My yoke is easy. If you're struggling, just yoke up with Jesus. He'll pull you and your problems out of the, out of the ditch. He's the one that can solve all your ruin. And you can find joy, unspeakable, and full of glory in the midst of chaos. And what speaks volumes more to this world that in the midst of a mess, God's people have joy. Thank God for Hadad having joy in the city of ruins. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song. God spoke to your heart. The altar is open. Need some help? Why don't you come get some help? Last thing you can do is let pride keep you from Jesus. Last thing you can do is think you can handle it. Don't you come get some joy? They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you that you're a present help in time of need. Psalmist said, I'll look unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Father, folks need help here in our community and abroad. Lord, the answer is always Jesus. Lord, help folks in the midst of their problems. Lord, do a work in people's hearts. God, help us to shine as lights in the midst of ruin by having joy, love, peace, the fruit of the Spirit working in our lives. God, these that are already in the altar, help them whatever they stand in need of. God, if there's somebody that knows they need to come to you, but they're fearful, God, give them that measure of faith. God, help them take that first step. Lord, they take that first one, you'll help them take all of them. Help them just come. God, just do work in people's lives. It's so evident that folks will take note. We've been with Jesus. Bless now. Speak to hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.